Hey guys, um, I know it's been a while, sorry, um, I've been pretty depressed, uh, I quit my job for personal reasons, um, and it's been kind of a bumpy ride lately, so, um, sorry, anyway. I have a story to tell you guys about today, and it's quite the story. Um, the story is called Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. Um, it is by Eric LaRocca. This story is told through the compiled correspondence of emails and DMs between two young adults named Agnes and Zoe. Um, the story begins by telling us that Agnes is dead and Zoe is currently on trial. For what we don't know. The story begins with a 24 year old woman named Agnes posting an ad on an LGBTQ forum board. Um, she is planning to sell an antique apple peeler that has been in her family for generations. Shortly after posting she receives a reply from a woman named Zoe. Zoe is interested in buying the apple peeler for her grandfather but is curious as to why Agnes is selling it in the first place as Agnes has stressed how important it was to her. Agnes explains that the apple peeler was one of the few things that her mother could afford to give her when she moved out, and it held precious memories of her and her grandmother. But when she moved out, Agnes made a promise to herself to live as authentically as she could. That meant calling up her parents and coming out to them over the phone. Her mother simply said, my child isn't gay, and hung up the phone. This was two years ago. It was the last thing Agnes's mother said to her. She goes on to explain that she would keep the apple peeler if she could, but she was forced to take a pay cut at her job and has been struggling to make rent. Zoe then offers to pay Agnes's rent payment and insists that Agnes keep the apple peeler. She explains that she is lucky enough to have never needed to worry about money. Agnes accepts the help and the two exchange instant messenger contacts. The two women begin to chat every day. One day, Zoe tells Agnes about a saying her dad used to ask her. What have you done to deserve your eyes today? Zoe then tells Agnes that she is going to make sure that Agnes does something every day to deserve her eyes. Zoe orders Agnes to go out over the weekend and buy a brand new red dress and blood red lipstick to wear to work. Agnes does so and takes a picture for proof. The outfit does land Agnes in a bit of hot water at work, but Agnes is satisfied that she had earned her eyes for that day. One night over Instant Messenger, while discussing wants and desires, Zoe explains that she wants to have complete control over another person, and Agnes decides that she wants to give that to Zoe. Zoe draws up a contract that Agnes happily signs. The next day, Zoe demands that Agnes leave a pair of her underwear in a bathroom stall at work. Agnes does this, is caught, and promptly fired. Zoe tells Agnes not to worry because she will be taking care of her financially from now on. Zoe asks what Agnes would want if she could have anything. Agnes tells her that if she could have anything she wanted, it would be to have a baby with Zoe. She wants to be a mother. Zoe's response to this is troubling to Agnes. In her next email, Zoe explains that salamanders represent rebirth. She instructs Agnes to go to the park nearby her house find a salamander and keep it in her pocket all day. When the day is done, Agnes is to smash the salamander with a rock until it is dead. Agnes begs Zoe to find another task for her to complete, but Zoe remains firm. Agnes carries out the task but is sickened by herself after she does it. She asks Zoe to void the contract as she never plans on speaking to her again. Zoe respects Agnes's wishes and considers the contract voided. This should have been the end of it, but unfortunately, Agnes emails Zoe after a little over a month to apologize and beg for forgiveness. She says she loves Zoe and wants to make her happy. Zoe happily forgives her and the two begin talking each night again. One night, Agnes is lamenting on the fact that they will likely never have a baby together and Zoe comes up with a plan. What is a baby before it's born? It lives off a host body, much like a parasite. She tells Agnes that she must contract a parasite if she truly wishes to feel the sensation of carrying life within herself. Agnes agrees to do it. 
She buys a cut of uncooked beef and leaves it outside for two days, allowing bugs to come and feast and lay eggs inside of the meat. She then consumes the entire thing. Zoe is all like, holy shit, I can't believe you fucking did that. I thought you were going to tell me to fuck off or something. Agnes emails Zoe, informing her that it didn't work. She just got really sick and had to go to the hospital. Zoe doesn't respond. After a while, Agnes emails her that things may be changing. She is having awful cramps and vomiting nonstop. Zoe congratulates her and tells her to check with her physician to be sure. Agnes asks if she's happy. Zoe responds, I'm happy if you are. Agnes confirms with the doctor that she is in fact carrying a tapeworm. Agnes is overjoyed to share this news with Zoe. Uh, she was prescribed meds but refuses to take them. Zoe asks what will happen when she finally passes the tapeworm and Agnes is convinced that won't happen. She's convinced that she will always be carrying their child. Zoe seems put off by this. Zoe sends Agnes an email the next day titled, I'm having second thoughts. Zoe expresses concerns for Agnes's well-being, explaining that she was just fucking with her a lot of the time. She admits that she is not a good person and concludes that she will be ending things between the two. I don't think I love you as much as you love me, she says. Agnes is furious, but Zoe sticks to her guns. She explains that she is cutting all ties. Agnes refuses this information, saying that she knows that Zoe loves her too much to abandon her and their child. After a few days, Agnes begs for Zoe to respond. Zoe does not. Agnes threatens to take a pair of shears and slice herself open to get her attention. After a few days, Agnes emails Zoe that she finally passed the worm. She says it's a boy, and it has Zoe's eyes and smile. She cradles the worm like a newborn baby. She takes the apple peeler and goes to her closet. She closes her eyes and wonders if she truly deserves them that day. And that's where the story ends. Uh, the next book I will be reviewing, or well, not really reviewing, the next book that I will be breaking down is The Slob by Aaron Beauregard. Um, I plan to have that out here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I already read it. I'm just going through the process of um, typing it up. So yeah, uh, I want to thank all of you for checking out my breakdowns and my reviews. It really means a lot to me. Um, like I said, I had to quit my job recently and I've been pretty depressed since then. Um, it's been pretty hard dragging myself out of bed, so, um, me putting in this effort and you guys actually consuming this, uh, it means a lot to me, so thank you very much. Um, I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.